the kind of groove that I'm in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very inspirational. So I, I see that there is definitely a common thread in all of your music, which is that there's a message behind every mm -hmm. song. So is there a certain message that you want the young girls out there who are looking up to you to take away from your music? Yes, I want them to never listen to any negative criticism that they receive. I want them to listen to their hearts and follow what they want to do. Whatever it be, whether it be a fashion designer or a makeup artist, even if it is to be the typical doctor or lawyer or mm -hmm. psychologist, um, to just follow their heart and do whatever they can do. We don't have to be stuck to the stereotypical roles that society throws on us or that our parents throw on us or that anybody, our neighbors, whoever it may be. Like, I think we're just meant to be here for a certain reason and a certain purpose. And I hope that my music can encourage everyone to follow their heart. Well, it's easier to say than do. So of is course. there something that helped you do that? There's been lots of different signs along the way. I mm -hmm. struggled a lot. Like, I struggled in believing in myself. I struggled in my self-confidence. But then I just, I prayed a lot. Like, really, that's just it. And every day, God would give me a little sign. Like, I, I remember one time I went um, to a karaoke bar. That's how I kind of started to get over my fears. I would sing every week at a karaoke bar. I didn't care what the songs were. I'd force myself to get over my stage fright and really get comfortable with my skin and mm -hmm. comfortable singing. And I remember someone had left a card on the table, and it was a quote, and it was a really weird kind of quote. I felt like it was left there for me. And it said, everybody has a talent. What is rare to find the people who have the courage to follow the light into the darkness. So um, that was kind of motivating to me. And I said, you know what, I'll be the one who's brave enough to follow the light into the darkness. I'll be brave enough to follow my heart. And I don't know where it's going to lead me. I don't know if I'll be successful or not. But to me, I feel like I already am successful because mm -hmm. I'm happy. And I love my life. And that's all that matters to me. So keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely a very good message, a very positive message from our beautiful singer here. So tell me, out of all the things that you've experienced so far mm -hmm. with this amazing gift you have, what's the best experience that you've had? So it started off being performing at the AC Fest Toronto because there was mm -hmm. like 5,000 people. There was this huge stage, biggest uh, concert I've done so far in my life. And um, it was my birthday, so oh. all my friends came from Montreal. My parents came from Florida. Everybody was there. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, this is it. Then it turns out the next day that I was actually featured in the Toronto Sun paper, this big picture of me. So I was like, okay, wait, no, that's the best, <laughs> most amazing moment. But then on top of that, it was really, really amazing because I got an email from someone who was suffering from cystic fibrosis, who was in the hospital that day. He had gotten a day pass, and he said he happened to walk by the stage, heard me singing, and he said it changed his life. And it doesn't matter how much press you get, it doesn't matter you know, if you're the headliner of an event or you know, the first one performing, no money or anything can take away that moment that someone said that I changed their life. So for me, that was the best moment of my career, that I actually motivated someone. He said, you know, I'm lying in this hospital bed thinking, why is this happening to me? Why me? And he said he realized that um, after hearing me sing and hearing about my struggles trying mm -hmm. to make it as a singer, he's saying, you know, at least I'm lucky enough to be in a hospital. At least I'm getting the care that I need. And he told me, thank you, Preetha, so much. You know, you made me realize that life is a precious gift and I need to, you know, not take it for granted and stuff. So I was so touched. He was so touched. We are both crying and stuff. It was a really <laughs> Did you get to meet home. him? Yeah, I did. I went and I met Aww. him at his hospital. So. It was amazing. That sounds really amazing. Yeah. I feel like crying yeah. now. Don't cry. <laughs> no, I won't cry. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it sounds like yeah. a beautiful experience. Welcome back to ATN. I'm your host, Anjali Sood. And today in the studio, we have a singer-songwriter with a very inspirational message. She is Preeta Chabra. Welcome back. Thanks for having me again. Thanks for being with us. So we talked a little bit about the reason you're doing all this. Each song has a message. Not only are you exploring your own passion for performance, but you're also giving something to the world at large, which is some uplifting music, mm -hmm. which is kind of, I think, sometimes lacking in in the world, mm -hmm. right? So it's nice to listen to something that has a message that makes you feel good after you hear it. And that's exactly what you're doing. So what's your biggest inspiration for all of this? I think everyday life experiences. Um, when I'm writing a song, it's me expressing an emotion that I can't express in any other way. And it's a healthy way mm -hmm. to, to express the emotion. So if I'm really happy, I'll write a really happy song. If I'm really sad, I'll write a really sad song. And my music is diverse and real because I'm diverse. I have, I, it's not all consistently the same mm -hmm. styles and stuff like that. So um, I, I get my inspirations from all sorts of things. Um, other people's lives inspire me. Um, when I went to Africa, I got really inspired. Um, so tell me more about that. So 
On the eve of my birthday, there's two people that have really inspired me in life. It was Bette Midler and then Oprah Winfrey, which mm -hmm. is why I think I stuck with a psychology degree for such a long time because I do have a passion to help people. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized I want to help people through my music. And um, she went to Africa, and I saw her DVD special, and on the eve of my birthday, I realized that I wanted to make a difference in the world. And I don't want to just think about it, like, oh, I should do something. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a little wish to the universe, and I said, please present me with an opportunity to do something in Africa. I didn't know why I wanted to do it, but I just felt really moved, and I was crying, because she so inspires me. Um, and then when I started music school that fall, I opened up my agenda and there was a flyer there recruiting students to go to Malawi to do an HIV AIDS research study. And I knew I was going to get picked. I knew right away and I felt this little tingling in my heart, I'm like, I know that this is for me. And I got picked and I got to go and we stayed um, at Makupo village, which is a rural village in Malawi. And Malawi is one of the world's most poorest countries, so I had no electricity no running water. I slept on a thin little mat mm -hmm. with a big mosquito net over me with huge cockroaches hanging <laughs> onto it at night. That's lovely. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to sleep. Just don't let me look at the outside. I, even when I was bathing, with a little pail of water as quickly as it could while massive cockroaches stared at me. Um, and I met some of the most poorest people in the world. And though the study was based on HIV AIDS, my life was completely changed because when I came back, like when I was there, I was in survival mode. I didn't think about anything except just getting through the next day and just doing my interviews, seeing why AIDS is such a big problem there and spreading the awareness about it. When I came back, um, our flight stopped in Amsterdam and I smelled someone's cologne and I was like, oh my God, I haven't smelled it in such a long time. And it all came back to me and I realized how lucky I was to live in the West. And um, I realized how lucky I was to get to go to school. Usually I complain about going to school and having to do this exam and that exam. And there mm -hmm. I met orphans dying to go to school and dying to have opportunities in their life to make something out of their life. Right. And here I am with all the opportunities in the world, too scared to sing, thinking, oh, I'm not pretty enough to be a singer, thinking I'm not talented enough to be a singer, not taking advantage of any of the opportunities that I have. And I said, I'm wasting my life. What am I doing? And it really inspired me to take my music seriously. In Africa, I was singing on a bus, and someone heard me singing, and they said, Oh my God, you have such a lovely voice. Come sing to the choir, uh, with the choir in the church. So I got to ling, uh, learn songs in their language, which is um, Chichewa. Um, and I got to sing in their church. I got to sing for members of parliament in Malawi, wow. and I mm -hmm. got to sing at many different villages. And it totally changed my life. It totally changed the way I perceived me and my music. And I said, from now on, whatever opportunity I get, I'm going to take it this life. I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. I want to make the most of my life. So I always think of Africa and it always inspires me to keep doing my best and to keep, you know, a good head on my shoulders, not worry too much about the little things. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> just from talking to you for a little bit, I know that you're a very spiritual person. Yes, I am. <laughs> you give off that vibe. Yeah. So tell me, how important is spirituality in your profession? I think my profession is spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm writing a song, it's always very spiritual. When someone is touched by music, it's like a spiritual experience. And um, when I'm writing and I have that song finished, I feel so good. I feel so proud of myself. Like I've brought into this world something that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it came from out of this world. Sometimes I'm like, maybe God is like singing in my head or something. But I am very spiritual and I always ask God for advice. And it's not necessarily religious. But I just believe that th there's a higher purpose in life and that I'm here as part of that. And mm -hmm. that we're all here as part of that, so.